Okay, I have my list. Okay, so I guess welcome to a new series. We are out in the woods today. Yeah, um, I suppose for this series we want to make it feel different to what we normally do because in essence it is different to what we normally do. So obviously normally we'd talk about advice and stuff and for this series we're going to document I guess our journeys to launching both of our bands. If you didn't watch uh, the video two weeks ago, Joe announced that he's also going to be launching a band too. This is going to be the first episode in that kind of mini-series. So in terms of where we are with the bands, I've been playing with the band that I'm in now, which granted had member ch members change and stuff like that, but I've been playing with them since November last year, I believe. So it's been almost like a year, like three quarters of a year in the making, and we still haven't launched yet. We haven't had anything online that's to do with the band itself. So we started um, in November with three members, uh, me as guitarist and singer, um, a bassist and drummer, and then we got Joe, Joe joined us for a little bit and started playing with us, then Joe decided it wasn't what he wanted, uh, left alongside the bassist who joined another band who, who were playing music more like what he wanted to be playing. So we then got another bassist in, um, which is the lineup now, so we're back to one drummer, one bassist, one guitarist, and me still singing. So we, we had songs that we wrote in the, with the original three. In fact, if you remember, uh, just over a year ago, I did a little mini-series um, about anti-stuff where I was writing an EP, and I was going to be releasing that through Music Lab, and it was just a solo thing. This band that I'm in now came about from me wanting to play those songs with a band. Obviously, then we wrote songs with the three original members, and then Joe joined and we wrote some more songs. Then, in the lineup that we're in now, we've got like a few of those songs, but in essence, we, we wrote about over an album's worth of songs, then, then narrowed them down to the five that we're going to be actually releasing on the debut EP. Your situation is, I guess, completely different. To... Yeah, my situation is, it was a very spur-of-the-moment thing, where my friends were just like, I'm going to make a band. And I was like, yeah. Let's make a band. This was about a month ago, and we plan to launch in November, so that's given us about four months of time to prep. But in doing that, we've kind of adopted a really raw style to the sound that we have, and we're not really trying to polish it or overproduce it in any way. It is really raw and from the heart. And the fact that we don't, we haven't had much time to do it has really amplified that. I suppose both bands are going for kind of a DIY kind of feel, yeah. but in very different ways. Like, yes, we're producing everything ourselves, we're recording, mixing and all that, all ourselves. We're in all social media by ourselves, aiming to do all photo shoots and videos all by ourselves. But we're trying to do it to a, like, almost like a high, as high quality as we can do. Whereas I suppose yours is specifically trying to get a DIY kind of feel. Yeah, we're specifically trying to sound really raw. Well, we don't even have to try and sound really raw, just because of the fact that we've we haven't had much time and the emotion that we're putting into our songs, it just does sound really raw. Like, I know you've spent a lot of time perfecting your guitar tones and your bass tones and how your whole mix will sound. We really haven't done that, we've just kind of turned the amps on, turned the distortion up and we've started playing. So it is kind of the same, going for the same feel but on two different ends of the same spectrum. Yeah. We're both going for kind of an alternate, alternative garage rock sound, would you say? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, the three of us that are in the band now have all come from like a punk, uh, like pop punk, punk rock kind of background. So the influence of that is naturally going to seek over. So um, there are some parts that are blatantly just punky. Not necessarily, I don't think any, any part of any song that we've got would fit into the punk genre, but I think the influence is definitely there. But we've got like some, I guess, basic rock kind of influences in there, mm. got some really dirty kind of grungy stuff. Yeah. Is it, we, we kind of don't want to launch with a genre or having a genre attached to us because mm. we're not writing with that in mind. We're not thinking, well, we're a grunge band, so we can't do something like that. It's not, it, we're trying to be as free and open with our writing as possible. Mm. All the members in my band have come from relatively different backgrounds. Like the drummer, he's really young. He's in, quite into hip hop and rap and grime and that stuff and our singer is also heavily into grime whereas me and the guitarist are more into rock style music he's really into his muse and i'm really into my slaves and royal blood type music so we've kind of fitted all those influences together and we've kind of come out with a grunge grime sound which i suppose is new and i suppose it's it harkens back to what we're what we're always telling you to come up with your own genre that is what i've done in my band and that's what you're doing as well combine your influences and create a new sound
Yeah, I mean, I think we did it almost like subconsciously. We didn't make the active thing no. of being like, oh, well, let, let's write a grungy style song. It, it kind of came from like writing a riff and then, okay, where can this riff go? So then you've got a riff part and a verse part or a riff part and a chorus part. Mm. At which point you can look back at that and go, oh, well, that sounds kind of grungy. It wasn't the other way around. We didn't go, let's write something that sounds grungy. We just kind of wrote for what we'd got. Does yeah. that make sense? I suppose we kind of adapted a chord sequence or whatever to fit with the style of a riff or whatever, or a drum part or anything like that. We didn't specifically try and stick to a genre and deny any um, creativity that we might have if it diff differs away from, from anything that we've written previously. Obviously, if there's something that sounds metal, and, and we go, well, we don't want that kind of sound, then we'll drop that song. But even then, we, we tend to flesh out that song to be a near-finished song before dropping it. Uh, due to the kind of grunge-slash-grime influence that our band has, we're not really going for a specific look. Like, if you watch the video that we did a few weeks, months ago, about the look for your band, we're kind of going for a very raw... Not bedroomy, but kind of a really DIY, just normal people kind of look. We, on the other hand, I mean, we've still got a lot to sort out about this because it's all right deciding on a look, but if then in a music video you don't stick to it or in photo shoot you don't stick to it, you, you don't have that look. So none of that's been done yet. So I suppose our final look isn't decided until we get photos or videos done. A theme, but it's not a theme in terms of like a specific type of something that we're wearing. It's more of a colour scheme. So we're going with yeah. a purple and green colour scheme, which um, is a weird kind of combination. In terms of when you see something that's themed with uh, green and purple or green and pink, uh, you're going to associate that with maybe a bit weird, which I suppose is what we want. And the fact that we're not going to be launching with a genre attached to us, we're hoping that's going to have some kind of intrigue towards checking us out. Um, so in terms of, I guess, what we're wearing, we're going to avoid, I guess, what normal people would wear, you know, like band tops or anything with the logo on. We want to try and make it as plain as possible. So, you know, like black shoes, black jeans, black top or whatever, no, nothing with, nothing that you can guess a personality from. So then that would hopefully make people judge the music rather than us, which I suppose is what we want rather than... Like you say, you, you want to look like that kind of DIY, mm. made in the bedroom kind of thing. Yeah. There's us being a polished DIY, that, that doesn't have a look, so there's nothing that we can do to, I guess, associate with that. So to flip it on the other side, we're making it so they can't associate anything with our image, if that makes sense. Mm. And then running with the colour scheme is just, it's an interesting set of colours and it can be associated with a bit weird, which I suppose is what it is because it's such a weird combination of genres. I get that we've been a little bit vague. We haven't said the name of his band. We haven't said the name of my band. That's because we're doing this on purpose um, so that when we launch, we launch properly. You're going to hear a lot about the bands before you hear anything from the bands. That's, that's just how we're going to be doing it. And we'll talk about that more when we've actually launched, I suppose. What are you doing? Paranoid. I'm thinking some like 14 year old scooter kids are going to come and kick our asses. The plan as of now, granted it's not been um, I guess finalised, but we plan on launching at the same time, yeah. or uh, as close uh, together as possible kind of thing, because we plan to do a launch gig. Yeah, we're planning we're, on doing like a, a joint headline launch gig that we're going to organise together. Yeah, so in terms of the time scale of everything around that, we're planning on releasing a single with a music video a few weeks before the launch gig. That'll be when we launch the name, photos, anything like that, it'll be a full uh, launch on social media and then we'll back that up with a gig a few weeks after. Um, we're kind of going for a really similar thing with the launch. We're going to launch with a single, a free single and a music video that's going to go up straight away along with all the social media pages, the branding, the name, it's all going to be released at once so people have that thing that they can see there that actually has a product on it that you can get for free. That's what I'm saying because there's a lot of bands that launch with logos and uh, social media pages. They don't have any music online. So what's the point? Yeah, that it's almost like that's a, your page and your logos are a marketing tool for music. And if you don't have any music, then... Yeah, I, I get that maybe you're wanting to um, promote gigs or whatever, but people aren't going to go... People who don't know you aren't going to come and see you if they have no idea what you sound like. And a lot of people will 
counter that by putting a genre in on like Facebook or in, in the Twitter little bio bit, putting their genre. Yeah, or putting the four fans of thing where you kind of yeah, you detail do... which bands you aim to sound like and then fans of those bands will hopefully like you as well. But the only problem with that is that a common genre is alternative, which is such a wide genre yeah. in itself that it, it doesn't help. There are so many bands that I like that are alternative and there's so many bands that I hate that are alternative. Same as rock. That's too vague. Like, Queens of the Stone Age are rock, but some Arctic Monkeys songs you could call rock. That, they're, they're at completely different ends of the spectrum and both can fall under rock. I think the only band that I would actually class as a just a general rock band are Foo Fighters. Yeah, I suppose they don't even fit even slightly into any other genre. No, they're not hard rock, are they? They're not soft rock by any means. No. They've got maybe a few songs that have got a bit of punk influence, like White Limo, but yeah. that's that's a minority. That's like writing a ballad and saying mm. that someone writes ballads. That, yeah. Yeah. So it's probably worth noting that we, as much as we're doing similar launches, we're launching with like proper photos and mm. press photos. You're not. We're not going to have any press photos at all. We're going to make it really not about us as people. We're not going to push like oh, here's the members of the band that you might find these people interesting individually. Like, we're going to launch. Here's his music. Listen to it. Which is a good way of, a good way of doing it. Yeah. Um, Whereas you're going for... You're taking that to a whole new level with the whole silhouette anonymous thing. Yeah, so we're, we're planning on launching... Um, I don't know how long we're going to make it last for, but we're going to try and launch... Making it kind of unknown as to who we are. While still showing, so maybe if we launch with the music video being a performance video, um, that being us just playing to the camera, maybe blurring faces or having it so that only the background's lit and we're silhouetted or something like that, because I think that's kind of, uh, I think that's a cool way to launch because people who are finding you for the first time, which in theory will be everyone, there'll be that kind of element of intrigue there because they don't know who's in the band. They, they can see the people that are in the band, but they can't. I actually see them if that makes sense like because yeah. they're silhouetted or because the faces are blurred or whatever I think faces blurred is probably not the best idea just because that looks a bit like you're using someone's footage yeah you're using footage of someone yeah it'll associate with like when you film someone and they say I don't want my face in that and then you blur it kind of thing like I said we, we haven't properly decided on what we're going to be doing for that maybe we'll launch with faces or whatever that's uh, not been not been properly decided yet but that's that's kind of the ideas that we've been running through with that. Mm. What 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 are you planning on doing for your launch music video? For our first music video, we're not going to have any performance shots at all, I don't think. I think it's just going to be a story-driven video because the song that we're releasing first is like maybe one minute and 50 seconds long. It's a really short song, so we want to cram like a really cool story into that short amount of time. Okay, so from launch, uh, we plan on wait until probably after Christmas into the new year and then long, uh, releasing an EP which I've already said five tracks um, we'll launch a music video alongside that to promote the EP potentially a free EP um, just because it's nice to be able to go if you don't know who my band is here's some music listen to it it's yours rather than being like oh you want to listen to my band give us some money and I'll give you some music like I'd rather just give to then build fans rather than expect people to pay us for something that they don't know what it is the only exception of that would be like spotify i don't know i'd rather just do it if, no matter what how you want to listen to music you can have it for free we are going for a slightly different approach again we're going to have our first single available for free in november like you said you were going to do and we will re be releasing singles over the course of the first half of next year rather than doing an EP straight away. We're going to aim to do a single in February and a single in June. Or maybe March and June. Just around early year and then coming into summertime. And then hopefully we'll be doing an EP around autumn time next year, so 2017. Uh, some people might be watching this and thinking, that's a, that's a long time that you're planning ahead. Like last year. Um, when we first started playing as a band we knew that we were going to be launching kind of late-ish into this year we kind of planned to be launching like July time but because of members changing and us wanting to write new material and then launch with an EP that got pushed back even more but we were essentially planning a year ahead I think every band should be doing that I don't think most bands do that I think at least 95% of bands want 
go like, okay, let's record an EP. And then they've recorded the EP, and then they go, right, let's put the EP out. Rather than logically thinking about it and going, okay, have we got a time for a tour? Okay, when, when can we tour as a band? Right, okay, so we can do that in four months' time. Right, okay, so let's, let's use that tour um, on the back of a single. And then let's try and, off the back of that single and that tour, build a nice amount of people who like the band, so then a month later we can launch an EP to all those new fans that we've gained. Doing stuff like that and actually thinking about how everything that you do as a band works together. It needs to be one cohesive plan. Um, so that's gigging, launching photos, uh, just branding in general, along with releases. All of it needs to be combined into one plan. And I don't think most bands do that. It's raining. It's raining. That's great. It's supposed to be summer. Welcome to the British summer. It's not raining too bad though, so we're gonna- Fuck off, you fucking little shit. With this series, we're gonna, you might not see anything from the series for a little while, um, but we're gonna be talking about the launching of each band, maybe how we do it differently. I'll talk a bit about what I've been doing on social media, because my band has a social media account on Twitter currently, so if you follow this, obviously by the time that we launch, we're gonna change that name because it says band loading. The band isn't gonna be loading when we launch, so this is kind of a temporary thing. Um, so if you kind of want ideas about what you could do on social media without even launching your band, go check out what we've been doing, because I don't know, I've, ne I've never seen a band do this before, like, I guess what, what we're doing, where we we have a social media account saying, there is music coming, and there is a band name coming, but we're not gonna tell you it yet. We'll have a video about that and about what I've been doing with that and talk about it in a bit more details. We'll talk about maybe the recording process that both of us have gone through differently and the advantages of each. And we'll talk about the actual launch and maybe even document launch gigs and stuff. This, this series might not be updated for a few months, but it will be. Okay, have a good day. Come on, it's fucking pissing me down. Yep. <sighs> <clears throat> Oh, it wasn't recording. Oh, what? Fuck off, you fucking little shit.